Last Sunday I started a message. So I put a few things together in the folder for preach. I started a message on called marked for greatness. We are marked for greatness. I started this last Sunday. And the back is over Christmas. I took some time just to pray and seek God and ask him what he wants me to do. Because I, I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, God gave me this word. And it's because God wants us to be great. And we are marked for greatness. We are marked for greatness. Your life is not a mistake. You are marked for greatness. And there's a certain mandate that God wants to fulfill in your life. Thank you, Nathaniel, by the way. Thank you. So, greatness. so there's a reason and a purpose why God created each one of us. There's a reason and a purpose why God created one of, every one of us. So there's a mandate over your life. There's a divine assignment over your life. There's a divine assignment over your life. And when you discover that assignment, it becomes unveiling to you and it becomes the purpose why God created you. Therefore, the reason why I'm saying you're marked for greatness is because you're not a mistake. You're not an accident waiting to happen. It's because God has a reason why he put you on this planet. There is a reason and there is a purpose. And that purpose can only be fulfilled by you. It can, you're the only person who can fulfill that. So anything you've ever, you will ever become in this life, church, God has already deposited it in your spirit. Everything that you'll, you'll ever become is for you to unfold it and to unveil that day by day. What is greatness? What does greatness mean? Greatness means to be distinguished, to be eminent, church. It means to be elevated, to be dignified, and to continually grow in influence and dominion. That is greatness. And that is what we are called to do in our areas of God. Because the will of God for you to stay, for you is to stand out. And the only way you can be able to stand out is when you understand there's greatness within you. God has not only given you greatness, but he's given you the power to fulfill that mandate over your life. And that's why the Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world of faith. So we are born of God. We are born of God. So we have the capacity of God in us. God has given us that capacity. And that's why the Bible says the greater one is inside of you. You are of God like your children. Why? Because the greater one inside of you, his name is Jesus, is going to give you power to fulfill that mandate. Therefore, as you face life, as you face this year, just know that you are marked for greatness and nothing can stop you from fulfilling your mandate apart from yourself. Nothing can stop you. No entitlement, nobody can stop you. No social, nothing apart from yourself. And the reason why many people fall into captive of, of those things they do is because they don't know who they are and what they carry. Once you know what you carry, you become unstoppable. You become strong, you become courageous because whatever you face, you face it in this reality church. Jeremiah 1.5, the Bible says that God, before I formed you in the womb of your mother, I knew you. I sanctified you. Sanctification, they have said so many times. It doesn't mean consecration. It means being set apart. Therefore, you are set apart for greatness. You are set apart for certain things that you are supposed to fulfill in this life. And that gives you confidence. Even to, to even confront some demonic and principality powers. Because you know who you are on the inside. Ephesians 2 times, the Bible says that we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship, God handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, and the good works which God created before ordained that we should walk in them. Therefore, you are created for good works, and I'm coming to that. Created for good works that God ordained before you came into this world. Therefore, you are not a mistake or a surprise to God. God created you and he finished you before actually deployed you on this planet Earth. And that's when you read it, the book of Genesis. God created first. Creation happens in the spirit. When you're praying, you're creating things in the spirit. We are calling things which are not as though they are. Because we are creating things in the realms of the spirit. Therefore, child, creations happen in the spirit. And that's why I'm, I'm trying to say to you that whatever is going to happen in the flesh it is because it first begins in the spirit. And you are created for good works. Great men are known for good works. Great men are known for good work, church. Stay with me. Joseph was known. Joseph was known for bringing the children of Israel to Egypt. Joseph was known for opening his ten storehouses and sold grains to Egyptians. 
When the famine was severe throughout Egypt, Joseph was known for that. Then Moses was known for taking out the children of Israel from Egypt to the promised land. So there was a time for coming in and time for going out. One person had a mandate to bring them in, another person had a mandate to take them out. And therefore it's important for you as a child of God to understand the times and the seasons of God. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 4 32 that the sons of Issachar understood the times. They understood the times, church. Therefore, as you're facing this year, yes, you're marked for greatness. Yes, God wants to do great things in your life. But we need to understand the seasons and the timing of God. Because one thing that I've seen many believers losing out is because they don't understand the season of God. What is God soon doing in your life at a certain time and moment? Elijah did good works by destroying the prophets of Baal. Abraham did a good work by becoming the father of the nations. Gideon did a good work by defeating the Midianites. Therefore, these guys are known for great works. Why? Because they're known to be great because they did great works in the house of God. They did a great work to advance the kingdom of God. Therefore, what is greatness? Like I said, it's eminent. It is to be distinguished. It is to stand out until you outstand. But in the kingdom of God now, greatness is defined different. Because in the kingdom of God, greatness is about, it's not about how much money you have. It's not about how many material things you can buy. It's not about how expensive holidays you can afford. But greatness is found in Mark chapter 10, walk with me, Ethan. Verse number 43. The Bible says, Jesus speaking here, he said, yet it shall not be among you. Watch this. But whoever deserves to be great among you shall be your servant. Therefore, greatness on this occasion is not about what you have. The foundation of greatness is service. The foundation of greatness in the house of God it is in service. Serving God with what he has given you. Serving God with the wealth he's given you. Serving God with the talent he's given you. Let me tell you, church, one day when I was young, my grandmother has given me a story of a one guy, we call them in Kenya, Mokorinos. Mokorinos are people who put a white uh, cloth on their head. I was six years old. And this man was walking from a place called number 10, going through the slums. And he comes across me. And he says to my grandmother, this young man is going to be great. This young man is going to serve God. This is 32 years ago. 32 years ago, Mokorino walking with a tram like this, going to whatever God was taking him. Students say this one is marked for greatness. 32 years later, the story is unveiling itself. Why? Because I am a chosen generation. And this one time to said to you, Judge, you are a chosen generation for such a time as this. You are born for dominion. You are marked for greatness. Nothing can stop you because God is on your side. But we need to get it right. We need to get it right, Judge. 1 Peter 2 9, the Bible says, You are a chosen generation. Royal priesthood, watch this. A holy nation is all special people. Therefore, you are special to God. You are special to God. And it's important for you to understand God has created you to serve Him with what He's given you. He's created you to serve our generation. And we have people in the Bible who are evident in this. The Bible says in Acts 13 36 that David, after he served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep. Watch this. He fell asleep after his self generation and was buried with his fathers. This man, he died at a very young age, 70 years old. But even today, we are still singing his songs and he's still singing his books, reading his books. Why? Because he served God and he served people with what God gave him. He became a blessing to this generation, to his generation. Therefore, church is a clarion call. It's a clarion call to us that God wants us to be great. God wants us to be to do great things in his kingdom. God wants us to be up us and to increase us and to take us from one glory to another. In our spiritual life, in our finances, in our industry, in everything. Actually, God has called you to take over that industry. Actually, God has called you to be a blessing to so many people. And that is greatness. Therefore, I was listening to Bishop and Mom as they were thinking the word of the year. And this is so powerful in my spirit. So walk with me. But the people who know their God shall be strong. Watch this. 
But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. The word there is great exploits, but there's a condition for you to carry out that. There's a condition to carry out that. Why? Because you need to know your God. And I was doing a study. Why Daniel prophesied this? The reason why Daniel prophesied this is in 167 BC, there was a king called King Antiochus the fourth. This King Antiochus, what he did, he started frustrating the children of Israel. He is frustrating the kingdom of God. He started frustrating the children of Israel. He was the king, he was the fourth King Antiochus the fourth. He was the king of Syria. For the first time since the Babylon invasion. But this guy, what he started to do is to frustrate the Jews. And actually, it is written according to the records. He was the most frustrating king in the reign of the Jews. He was the most frustrating guy. He was frustrating them and even stopped them from offering sacrifice. And telling them they should not worship God. That whoever worships God, actually the sentence was death. But this is where I want you to draw attention, church. Daniel saw this atrocity coming. He saw this coming and he prophesied. And he said, you know what? People who know their God, the condition there is knowing. And if you are studying, there was a people, a group of people that live between the Old and the New Testament. They are called Maccabees. The Maccabees, they were living under the reign of Antiochus. And this guy is what they decided to do. They decided to repent against the king. They say, you know what? We know our God. We know we're supposed to worship. We know we're supposed to bring a sacrifice. Who are you king Antiochus before our God? And they decided, you know what? We will not worship the God is introducing to us. We will stand up for our God. Because why? They knew their God. Therefore, church, watch this. For you to be able to do exploits, you need to know the God you serve. You need to understand the capacity that God holds. There's a confidence you get when you know your God. How? Then you become unstoppable, child. There is a level to his divinity. It doesn't matter what you come up against. And I'm coming to it. When David faced Goliath, if you study the Bible, I'm coming to it. He said, you know what? Today, I will finish you. And he had not even sang in one stone because he knew the man had come to him with swords. But he said, you come to me with a sword and with an army, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Therefore, church, you need to know God at a personal level. And last Sunday, I sat in the said, you know, well, our God is dependable. Our God is the ancient of days. He never fails. Our God is on time and nothing is too hard for God. And this year shall be great. This year we shall do exploits. But we need to get to a place where we don't doubt God anymore. We need to get to a place where we know God for ourselves. We know God at a personal level. You understand that you are a God project. You are a God project, church. You understand that you are unstoppable. You walk in that reality of knowing no matter what the enemy brings in my way, my God is bigger than that. Because let me tell you, church, we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you think or imagine. It doesn't matter where you are born. It doesn't matter what you are going through. God is able to pick you from nothing and position you to a place of influence for his glory. But it comes from a place of knowing church. Ephesians 2, 10 again, you can walk with me. We are his workmanship. His workmanship. You are a God project created in Christ Jesus. Therefore, you are unstoppable. You cannot fail. And you need to live for God. You're only, your life can only take the shame of God. But you get to go to that place of knowing God as your father. Knowing God as your soul provider. Knowing God as your healer. Knowing God as your deliverer. Knowing God, he is the only thing that causes you to exist. And this is the place where David called, baby. In the book of Psalms 121, he turned and he said, my, I lift up my eyes to the hill. Where does my help come from? Church, your help comes from the Lord. Then he said, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And I came to let you know from verse number 5 that the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at the right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. For he shall preserve you, church. He shall preserve you this year. He shall preserve you, church. But God is calling us to a place of knowing.
knowing him at a personal level. Isaiah 41, 10, the Bible says, fear not. Fear not, fear not, for I am with you. Be not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will hold you with your righteous right hand. Therefore, last Sunday, we started this journey. And I said, one of the things we need to do to continue walking in this greatness, we need to be intentional with our walk with God. We need to be intentional, church, because God is a nation of being. He wants to relate with you. Develop and be intentional with your walk with God. The Bible says in Revelation 3.15, this is John speaking to the church, in a, to the churches in Asia. He was in the Isle of Patmos and he was speaking to the churches. And he knows, I know your words, that you are neither cold or hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So that because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This is God Speaking through John to the churches in Asia in the Isle of Patmos. Therefore, God is calling us to a place where we are solid with Him. We are fully in, and we know it's God's way or no way. It's God's way or no way. Therefore, today I want to continue on this journey. And my first point for today is intimacy. God wants us to develop intimacy with Him. Because the ultimate level of every relationship. It's intimacy. The ultimate level of every relationship is intimacy. Intimacy comes from knowing the person to the highest level. Intimacy is togetherness. It's becoming one. And actually the Hebrew word for, yeah, for, for knowing God is yada. It's appeared in the Bible more than 950 times. That's why it's so important to know God for yourself. And the knowing I'm talking about is about that it's not the knowledge level. Is the experience level where you know God for yourself. You know God for yourself, church. And it's evident through scriptures, especially for someone like Abraham. He knew God to a place where he was negotiating with him. When God wanted to finish Sodom and Gomorrah, the man was negotiating with God and telling God, if I find 50, will you finish them? If I find 40, will you finish them? He came down even to 15, 10, 20. He knew God at a personal level. According to Genesis 18, 17. He knew God at a personal level to a place where before God did anything, he actually said according to scriptures, can I hide anything from my friend Abraham? There it is. The Lord said, shall I hide from, my, from, from Abraham what I am doing? Continue. Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Continue. For I have known him. Watch this. I have known him. This is the experience I'm talking about. If this is the experience, church. He had known him at a personal level. This is what I'm talking about. Moses, the same thing. He knew God at a personal level. Your place where you told God, God, if you're not going with me, I'm not going anywhere. This is what we are talking about, church. Knowing God at a personal level, you know, God, if you're not with me in this one, there's no way I'm going to do it. Church. There's a place only God can feel. There's a place only God can feel. Without the presence of God, we are nothing, church. We can have the accolades and the influence and the opulence, but without the presence of God, you are nothing. Because you'll be like a man who built his house on the sand when the seasons came. Tough seasons, the house was blown away because the foundation was wrong, church. 1 Corinthians 6 17, the Bible says, who is joined with the Lord is one spirit. I hear God speaking here today. Open your heart, church. Let's hear what God is saying. God is saying, give me my place and watch me. Watch me do great things with you. This is what Paul said in Philippians 3.10. He said that I may know you. That I may know you. God is calling us to a place of knowing God. Knowing God comes through fellowship, church. We must create time with God. We must create time for God. We should not be too busy for God. We should not be too busy for God because knowing God comes from fellowship. God is calling us to a place of knowing him if you want to do exploits. It's in, it's in that fellowship you create a relationship where you know God for yourself. I encourage you, church, in 2023, make a deliberate decision to know God for yourself at a personal level. Beyond coming to church every Sunday, beyond every prayer meeting, beyond a phone call with the pastor, know 
God for yourself. Know God there intimate with him. So that when, when somebody gives you a word, you know it's a confirmation because God has already spoken to you. Therefore, God is after our hearts and not after our acts. God wants to you to know him and not about him. He wants you to know him at a personal level, church. Proverbs 23, 26, the Bible says, give me your heart. Give me your heart and let you. Give me your heart, walk with me in the place. And let your eyes observe my ways. David speaking in Psalm 143, 6, he said, I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a first land. Psalm 63, 1, the Bible says, Oh God, you are my God. I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. They will speaking again in Psalm 63, 6, he said, When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Because you have been my help, therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. My soul follows closely behind you. Your right hand upholds me. Therefore, above everything, church, I know we're going to be setting goals for this year. And some of you have. But I want to encourage you to setting goals. Let God be the focal point of your goals. Because let me tell you, you might set up as many goals as you want. But if you don't make God to be your first, I tell you it's going to be like a man who built his house on a sand. Because I asked the other day and I asked people when I was talking to them. And I said, what foundation do you build your life on? Because your foundation determines your height. The height you want to go in life depends on your foundation. In, in construction, the first thing they check is foundation. It's foundation right. When you submit your plannings and you start to build, a structure or a building engineer comes out and they check the foundation. They don't check the building. They check the foundation. The foundation got to be right, church. The foundation got to be right. And I hear this in my spirit. Matthew 6, 33. God is calling us to this. Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. Therefore, God is calling us back to a place of intimacy. It's only God that makes the difference in our life's journey. Because believe it or not, one day you're going to close your eyes and the next time you open them, you're in front of God. Believe it or not, church, and I'm here speaking as a voice for God. One day you're going to close your eyes like this and the next time you open your eyes, you're with him. What are you going to tell him? Are you going to tell him you had four machines? Are you going to tell him you had 60 houses? Are you going to tell him you had 100 acres of land? There's no mansion bigger than God. There's no car bigger than God. There's no land which is bigger than God, church. We need to get to a place of intimacy with him. Where God becomes our everything. Every single detail in our lives reflects God. And that's why the book of Psalms 139, 7 to 8. This is David. David was a wealthy guy. He was loaded. He was a loaded guy. Do a study. He said, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, watch this. Behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lay me, and your right hand shall hold me. Church, let me tell you something. Nothing can substitute the place of God. Because sometimes what the enemy does, he distracts you. He's very cunning, he schemes, and he comes to distract you, church. Therefore, church, the last thing you want is to be disconnected from the blessing. I will give you the blessing. Because the life of the blessing is in the blesser. The life of the blessing is in the blesser, church. Therefore, I encourage you, please. I encourage you, church. If you want to break the backbone of toil in your life, get intimate with God. Matthew, Mark speaking in Mark 8, 36. He said, what shall it profit a man? Watch this. If he gains the whole world and loses his soul. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whatever is ashamed of me and my words in the adulterous and sinful generation of him, the son of man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory. We are living in a time where it's become very materialistic, church. Now it's about what you drive. It's about where you're living. It's about how deep is your wallet. 
We need to be careful, church. We need to be very careful because they, where the world is going at the moment is very materialistic. When somebody meets you, they don't know you. The first thing they ask is, they ask you, what do you do? Because they want to put you at a certain level to see whether you can interact with them. It becomes so materialistic. Finances, they shall flow and overflow. But they may, may they not drown you. Because I've been in a church and I've seen what has been happening. You come to church and we pray with fasting for you. You get blessed and you take off. We have become to a place where we are losing God. God give me, God give me, God give me. Once you take it, you take off. And it happens with the Israelites as well. They go to the promised land and they got ornaments. But they used these ornaments to build themselves a cult. They told Aaron when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. They convinced Aaron. They told Aaron, build us a cult. And they were using the same ornaments that they are supposed to worship God with to worship the cow. And that is why God showed David, uh, Moses, sorry. He said, these people have become stiff naked. They have become stiff naked. You know why? Because they've lost track of it. Just stay with me. I'm going to be a few more minutes. Therefore, please, it's only the blesser that can sustain the blessing. What you get in prayer and in God can only be sustained by God. And by prayer. Do not be deceived, church. Because God is not interested in parasitic relationship. He wants you to be one with him because he's a jealous God. Therefore, we need to be careful. Take me to Genesis, please. Exodus, sorry. Exodus 1 6. This is the place, church. Where they became stiff naked. Go to verse number 3 because of time. He said, Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you. On the way, for you are stiff naked people. They were, had become stiff naked because of what God had done in their lives. They were using the same ornament, the same ornament that they were supposed to be worshiping God. Now they are worshiping a cow. And God is a jealous God. Then God said to Moses, Okay, guys, you think you're good? Go without me. Go without me. Go without me. If you think you can do it without me, you carry on. And Moses was quick enough and he came and cried to God. And she said, God, God, if you don't go with us, we are not going. Genesis 33, 14, walk with me. And he said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you, sorry, Exodus, then I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. Therefore, rest there with the shalom of God. It's a peace of God. It's a peace of God, child. Therefore, the presence of God, the presence of God is very important in our lives, child. The presence of God is what makes us exist. The presence of God even actually means separation. You separate yourself. You separate yourself from, from, from self, self-sabotage. Self-deceiving behaviors, events, or carrying your progress to be clogged and your emotion to be clogged. Self-sabotage. We need to take care of this church. And we need to take prayer very seriously. And we need to separate ourselves from defeating habits. Defeating habits. Every time you do that thing, it takes you 10 miles back. Every time you do it, every time you engage, it takes you so many miles back. And this is God speaking. And the question I have for you today is, in the marketplace, who do you present? Who do you present out there? Can your workmates testify and say you're born again Christian? Can your colleagues say you're actually a born again Christian? And this is a word for the season, church. Because we need to know our God for us to be able to do exploits. Can people say, this man does not do that? Have you gotten to a point where you cannot do anything that hurts God? Or it's become so casual because you have it all. You think you have it all. Church, God is calling us. This is a clarion call. Let's get back to a place of prayer. Let's get back to a place of walking with God, church. God is going to bless us. Maybe not the last day you're going to engage in prayer meetings when God now begins to expand you. Therefore, who do you represent out there? Who do you represent? Do you stand up for God or for anything else? There's a portion of speech I want to learn within Acts 19. It's talking about the people who went trying to represent or trying to cast out demons in the name of Jesus that they, they didn't have a relationship with. The Bible says in Acts 9, 19, sorry, 11 to 16. 
Now God worked unusual miracles. I'm just going to be a few more minutes. God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even the handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the disease left them. And the evil spirit went out of them. Then verse number 13, the Bible says, Then some of the Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to watch this. To call the name of the Lord over those who are evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by Jesus whom the God preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva. A Jewish chief priest who did so. Then watch number 15, what the Bible says. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus, we know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? The God says, the Bible says, then the man in whom the evil spirits were lived on them overpowered them and prevailed against them. So that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Therefore, I ask you this morning, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who do you represent now? This is so powerful in my spirit. Because when you know God, He gives you strength. You know who you are. And you walk in that reality. And you represent Him to the fullest. Without fear or shadow of doubt. And without any shame. When you go in the marketplace, you don't compromise. You don't compromise them. You don't put, you don't put God ahead of anything. God is calling us for intimacy, separation. Because it's only that that will be able to be strong, bold, and courageous in the name of Jesus. Because when our spirit man is fortified, church, we are strong. And on the inside, we become immovable. Because our spirit man is fortified. So no matter where you are this morning, I want to encourage you. Make God to be the focal point of your life. Make God to be the focal point in your business. Make God to be everything in your life because without him you cannot do anything. And I'm speaking as a voice for God. Don't worship money. Don't worship material strength. These things will pass away. Give God his place. Give God his place, church. Give God his place to a point where when you face life, you're facing your life with this reality, knowing my God shall supply all of my needs according to his glory. Why? Because I am a God project. There's a point you get with God where you start talking like him, where you start thinking like God, where everything around you when people look at you, all this is God. Why? Because you got into a place of intimacy. Nothing moves you. Nothing takes you out of the presence of God. Nothing takes you out of service for God. There are certain things God has spoken to us in our wife. My wife and I about this church. And I'm telling you, church, we are coming to a place where the presence of God shall be so evident. We shall see the green people walk. We shall see the blind eyes open. We shall see the deaf ears open by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because it's not us. It is God who is doing it. Even when you're going through a tough time, because sometimes it's not about the storm. It's about who is it with you in that storm. Yeah, It's not about the storm. You could be going through a tough time. But as long as you're with God in the storm, let me tell you, it shall work for your good. Therefore, like I said, it gets to a place where you start thinking like God. You see things in the lenses of God. You start talking like God when, when people see they see God all around him. David won his battle before he even hit Goliath because he has developed a place with God where he knew nothing can stand in front of him. And maybe you're here, you are, you're looking at your failures. Let me tell you, Gideon was beat from a hole. Joseph was taken from a pit. Daniel from a lion's den. Therefore, God has a David actually. He was anointed when he was looking after his father's schedules. So God has a tendency and a history of picking people from the beach and not from the pedestal. So therefore, no matter where you are right now, maybe you're watching me actually. 
and you feel broken. I actually feel in my spirit there's somebody watching you feel so broken on the inside. You feel like you're a shell on the outside, empty on the inside. And my outside you're looking very good. God is saying, Give me my place so that I can bring life into your life. Therefore, every eye is closed, every head is bowed. God is working. You're marked for greatness, church. I have no doubt in my heart. But the Bible says in Daniel 11, 32, them that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. There is a strength that comes when you know your God. There is a strength that comes to you. There is boldness that comes when you know your place in God. Therefore, I encourage you, please cultivate and develop a relationship with God. Get to a place where no matter how high you go, no matter how blessed you become, God will remain in to be the focal point. The church, God wants us to lift us. God wants to do great things in our lives. 22. And so facing this year, this is our year of great exploits. This is our year we shall be strong and do great exploits. I pray for you right now. May nothing take you away from God. May nothing take you away out of his presence. Because his presence is everything to us. The ultimate level of every relationship is intimacy. God is calling us to a place of intimacy. And I say, God, God is so much. God, you're my ultimate desire. I want to delight in you for the first time. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you today. Blessed be the Holy Name. And actually, the Holy Spirit has reminded me something in my spirit. This morning I was praying, and I prayed for 10 times increase. Therefore, I'm praying for you in your family, in your business, in everything you do. I speak a 10 times increase in Jesus' name. God, your story shall be told again. This is the year where we shall begin again, and you shall do great things for God. But I pray for you that you may develop intimacy. Know God for yourself in Jesus' name. And maybe you're there, you're watching me actually. You don't know Jesus. Let me tell you, one of the greatest things that can happen to you is to know Jesus. This young man was talking to you, he was born in the slums with nothing. The only thing I had is God. And that God has taken me from my dad's slums to where I am today. Let me tell you something. God is able to change your life. Give him a chance today. And watch him do what no one can do. Watch him do what no accolades can do. Give him your life today. And watch him change your life. Therefore, why don't you repeat after me if you're watching me? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you. I give you my life. And today, I receive the gift of salvation. From today, I am a new creation. The old is and the new has come. I receive the gift of salvation. With my heart I believe Jesus is Lord. And with my mouth I confess. That he really died. And God raised him from the dead. If that was your lady to write Jesus. Tell us what God has done. God is working in here. God bless you so much. And if you're in the house I want to speak a special blessing. May God bless you as you lead this service. I decree and declare your life. Will never be the same again. I cover you right now. With the blood of Jesus. No weapon fashion against you shall be able to prosper. I cover your actress right now. I put a hedge of protection around you. Even as you decide that you're going to put God in his place. And you're going to cultivate and develop a walk with him. I pray it shall be easy. I speak increased grace in the mighty name of Jesus. You are covered. You are blessed. There's a man of God over this house. I speak a special blessing over you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you're coming in, when you're going out, you're blessed. I speak and declare the work of your hand is blessed. I speak and declare where your foot shall tread. God shall give you the land in Jesus' name. Whatever thing you need, whatever contract, whatever job, right now we speak and declare, right now it is done in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we honor you and we bless you. Glory be to your name.